Amplify Science Phase Change Unit Chapter 2, Lesson 2.2, Understanding Energy Transfers. At the beginning of each unit, we find ourselves in the lesson brief. Reminder here that you can find all the digital resources. There are projections and videos and an article in this lesson, and then access to uh, other accessory information if you need it. In Step 1, the warm-up, you revisit the image of the modeling tool that you've seen before, and they ask you to uh, suggest any changes you might make to that model. Step two, hands-on, experimenting with magnetic marbles. Uh, if you had the materials in front of you, you would imagine yourself with a cup and some marbles inside that cup. And what you'd be doing is observing the cup without shaking it, shaking it a little bit, and shaking it a lot. Again, trying to model solid liquid and gas, the freedom of movement of molecules. So the challenge here is it's distance learning. You probably don't have these materials at home. And you would also need the right kind of marbles. At my house, I have some very powerful magnets, some of those you know rare earth magnets. Uh, we couldn't shake them hard enough to get them to come apart without you know damaging something, If and we probably still couldn't shake them hard enough with our hands. So we're just going to review this together. Um, Think about when they mention transferring energy, they're talking about how hard are you shaking that cup? You're using what's referred to as kinetic energy, energy of motion. So if you're just sitting there holding the cup, you're not really moving it. There's very low energy. The magnets are probably going to clump together because magnets are attracted to one another. In the model, that's representing molecular attraction, the uh, attraction of each of the uh, round balls in the models and the simulations. In other words, let's just take ice as an example. So little molecules of water, little H2Os, represented by each one of those little round balls or one of those little round magnets. They, When they're close enough together, they, they attract each other. They want to stick together. And that attractive force uh, keeps them acting more like a liquid or a solid. So in this case, if we have no energy in the cup, the cup is sitting there, the marbles are inside, they're going to clump together. They're going to act very much like lower energy molecules moving less or a solid. Uh, as you shake it a little bit, you might get some of those magnets to move apart or shift around each other. This increases their freedom of movement. They're able to move in a larger area than they could before than being stuck together. Now we're starting to act like a liquid. Okay, they're changing shape a little bit. Uh, the energy level, the slow shaking is lower energy level, but higher than not shaking it at all. And then finally, giving it a really good shake without them flying out of the cup, uh, you would be adding more kinetic energy, more energy into the cup, which would cause the magnets to move faster. And as they bang into each other and other things, they're going to be able to break apart more often, acting more and more like a gas. So in this hands-on experiment, that is what they're trying to reinforce to you that you can see in with physical objects in front of you how the different levels of energy or speed of shaking or the speed of the molecules cause them to clump together more or less depending on how fast they're moving. And you're supposed to translate that into understanding solid phase, liquid phase, and gas phase. In step three, you're back to the simulation, in this case focusing on kinetic energy. Uh, there are three questions for you to answer, so it's a good idea to preview those questions before you actually click on the simulation link. Uh, and then there are instructions here that we're going to follow. I'm going to hop over to that simulation. It says, so in, in substance A, so over here on the right side, I'm going to make sure I select substance A. Attraction level is high. Uh, and then the upper right-hand corner, it says make sure you turn on the view kinetic energy. And now we get this bar of color gradient from dark to light, to bright. Uh, lower means, darker means low energy, and brighter, uh, the more, uh, I'm colorblind, so that seems kind of yellowishy, greeny kind of to me, uh, but this brighter color shows high energy. And what you are supposed to do is, by turning this on and pressing play, notice the energy level differences in the molecules. Notice there are some are low and some are high, and if you've learned anything about temperature at this point, um, you understand that the average of those is indicated on the left side over here with uh, temperature. Uh, and in the, right now it's 36 degrees Celsius. 
what you're also asked to do uh, is to add energy. So we need to go back over here to the uh, menu on the right and click the plus button to add energy. So I'm going to press that, but I'm also going to hold it down. And that's going to increase the energy. Now I want you to notice on the left, as I was doing that, uh, that the thermometer moves up. Right now it's up to 353 degrees Celsius. So there's much more energy in there. And how are the molecules act acting differently? How are their colors changing? Uh, so as you follow the steps on the instructions, uh, those are where your controls are. Uh, over here in the menu on the right, in the upper right hand corner, and then on the left. Uh, then it asked me to transfer energy out. This time I'm going to hold down the minus, and I want you to keep an eye on what's going on with the thermometer. Okay, notice that it's dropping, it's cooling off. Look at what's happening to the color gradients of the molecules and what's happening to the temperature uh, and, and molecule movement. So you're supposed to make those observations, changing those controls, and then coming back to the three questions and responding based on your observations and then handing that in. Before moving on to step four, uh, there is a teacher step in this lesson. You will need to go to the lesson brief to watch the video. But there's a video called Zooming In on Phase Change, and we'll watch that video or you'll watch that video before moving on to step four. And now that we move on to step four, you're introduced to some terms, kinetic energy, the energy that an object has because it's moving, moving, so it's an energy of movement. And then you're going to be writing a claim in the second step. Um, I'm going to pop open some projections to take a look at what's going on. So let's take a moment to reflect back on the simulation and what kinetic energy was. So in the gradient uh, in the simulation, less kinetic energy was a darker color. And as the colors got brighter and brighter, more towards... I guess now that looks a little bit more like orange and yellow. That has more kinetic energy. Those molecules uh, are moving more than the dark ones. And so what they tell us is temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of molecules in a substance. So all those molecules banging around to each other and banging into a thermometer uh, reflects the temperature in a thermometer. Um, there is video. There are videos posted as well on how a thermometer works that you might want to look at on Classroom as well. Uh, and then transferring energy to a substance increases the kinetic energy of that substance's molecule. So think about in the simulation, when you were clicking the plus button, you should have seen the molecules uh, start to brighten up in color and start to move faster. Transferring energy out, that's hitting the minus sign, bringing the temperature down, uh, decreases the kinetic energy of the substance molecules. They would have slowed down and turned darker in color. So those are the big takeaways in step four, which then allows you to uh, answer the pull down menu questions and start to explain what transferring energy into or out of a substance does. So if you, again, if you need help, look at those key concepts uh, and then think about what you learned in the simulation in your response and then be sure to hand that in. In the final step, step five, the homework section, uh, you will be returning back to models you've seen before, uh, and then you're going to model water on a stove, water in a freezer, and then reading an article. So you'll notice at the bottom there are three screens in step five. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is open up the model water on a stove. Uh, you've seen this before. This is one of the models in which you are in the left-hand column representing a phase, in the right-hand column representing a phase. Each of those boxes requires you to click on them. Uh, edit them, add molecule movement in which phase you think it is. Again, do not copy what I'm selecting. I'm just showing you how to use the model. Uh, also in there, you're going to be at dropping in arrows to show increase or decrease in energy and whether the energy was transferred in or out by using the menu on the right and placing things in the model on the left and then hitting hand in. By hitting hand in, uh, you'll know that you've done it because you'll have an image here in your original screen. So you model water in a stove in the first screen. In the second screen, water in a freezer. Uh, again, they start out looking very similar. Don't get them confused. Make sure you read the description at the top if you forgot which one you're looking at. So this one's water in a freezer. Once again, dropping over those boxes and arrows and placing them where you think you, they belong and showing energy transferred in or out. Right. Once you've done that, hit hand in. You'll see again your image in the space below. 
And then for the final step of this lesson, you're reading about what burns and what melts. And then in that article, after you've read it, you can then come down and answer the questions at the bottom and hand that in. And that will complete lesson 2.2.